Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and on today's video we're going to be fitting this. Yes, that's right, we have got a brake mod for the G29 Logitech steering wheel from a company called AXC Sims. Not seen any videos on YouTube about this particular brake mod. Um, it's f I don't know if it's fairly new or, or not. I've not really gone into the specs of you know how old this particular mod is. Um, but it, my God, it's well made. So we'll just do a little unboxing and then we'll do a full fitment and a description of how it works and how good it is and whether it's going to make a difference to your racing or not. Let's get on with it. Okay, so this is what you get. You get a little tiny box. And when you open this magic box, you have two little items. And the first thing you'll find in the box is this little bag of gubbins. If we just get it out of the box, we will see we have two... Ooh, the spring's gone for a burden. We have two what look like little stumps. And as you can see there, they're different heights. And these are basically the travel. I'm going to call them travel buttons. They basically sit on the top of the brake mod and they determine how much um, initial pedal travel you've got before you start hitting the mod itself. Yeah. So obviously one's much shorter than the other and then the spring goes on top and then you've got the travel okay so that's that and then in this little number nicely folded in this little um, cardboard tube is the main deal and it's quite a it's, it's quite a heavy little number mainly because it's made of CNC aluminium so this is the actual brake mod itself. On first look, you'd think that looks like a load cell. And you'd be wrong, because it's not a load cell, but it is built to replicate the feel of a load cell. But it actually works exactly the same as the actual brake that's in the G29 at the moment. So it does use um, a potentiometer. Excuse my doggies. Um, but it's, it's on a much more sensitive level because the travel of this thing is so minute. Um, so fingers crossed, it's going to be the happy medium between a load cell itself, brake mod, and just the normal, either you get a stiffer spring for your G29 or you get the little um, 3D printed inserts to give you less travel, um, less foot, less unresisted travel until the point that you need. Um, this is basically aimed at being in between. One, because it's a lot cheaper than a load cell, um, and but it's a bit more expensive than the springs and the 3D printed inserts. So let's get the pedal board out, take it apart, fit it and we'll see how we go okay all the tools you're going to need for this particular install is a 2.5 mil allen key and a very thin phillips head screwdriver okay we're going to start by unscrewing all of the little screws on the back here we go Once that is done, once they're all out, hold and flip over. There we 
we go. And you'll find that the top is loose now, which is exactly what we want. So next we need to do is take the plates off using the Allen key. Be sure to take all the plates off if you've got all three on. cramp for space here and once that is in that position we can just lift it up and you will see here there are two screws holding the wiring in we need to undo them. There we go. And now the top is off. Once the top is off, we are now ready to do business. So wiring's out of the way. Again, I have swapped my brake for my clutch. So my brake is here now. So this is the one we are going to be working on. And the first things first is you take your Allen key from before and there are two Allen key fittings either side that hold the actual piston in place. So we want to take them off so we can undo it. Now you could undo the pedal from underneath to get better access to this. But I'm just showing you that you don't have to. Just a bit of patience is all you need to uh, get this going. That way, when you come to, especially put in the um, the mod on because obviously everything's going to be a bit stiff you're going to need the base to be still screwed in so you can put a bit of pressure on especially to line these little suckers up because they're a bit fiddly this is about to pop off come to the end there there we go so as you can tell by that, the actual mod that was in there was giving me quite a stiff pedal. There we go. So we just pull it aside, pull it off. Now mine looks particularly gruesome, mainly because I copper greased the actual piston part. And the reason for doing that is why I was getting a sticky pedal and they just eliminated the sticky pedal altogether. So I'll just pause the video a second while I clean that up. Okay, so the only issue at the moment with this kit is that there's no instructions on how to fit it, which is a bit of a um, foo power on the company's part. They should at least give you a guide of what's to do and what you need but they don't so hopefully this video will go some way to help you install this particular part and as we've discovered we now need another allen key which is a four mil and we have to take off the lower nuts to take the lower portion of the piston off because this is the part, this is the actual part that's getting replaced um, so we'll just get busy with that. As you can see,
can see there's a nut on the other side. So, a long nose should do it. It's not going to be something that's particularly super tight. It's like a self-locking nut. So there we have it. Just hold and undo. It's not under any particular stress, it's just a bar for the piston. So there we go, take them out. loss and then this is free to come out which is what we want so we'll set that aside now then oh bloody grease everywhere so what do we have okay so now we've got a, an empty pot ready for the true brake to go in and you'll notice that there's a bit of wiring. Yep. Now, if you look on the side, you'll see the... Oh, I can never remember the word for it. But basically the pot. And what we need to do is we need to take the wires off. So take your long nose. Grip and pull. Just be gentle when you're pulling them off. Don't want to wreck anything. There we go. And the last one. Obviously, we're going to be rewiring and putting the, If you look on the back of this plug, you'll see that they're color coded and the colors are exactly the same black, red, and white. I'm going to leave. You can see the. I don't, know, I don't know if you can or not. You can see there is a an earth wire that's connected to the frame. When you've pulled them off, just leave it on there. No need to disturb it. So what we'll want to do is that is how it's going to be going on. So we'll get that through there. Plug it in so it's through. Get the bolt on there. We'll tighten it up in a second. And then we want to make sure we've got the right wires going to the right pin. Okay, so we'll start with the black one, which is on the far side. Then we have white. So, and then we have red, like so. And just make sure none of these pins are touching. And they're nice and solid. Okay. And you're good to go. Right then. Obviously my setup is slightly different because my brake's not in the middle. So the wiring is slightly different. But all we need to do is route this round. And you can either just plumb it straight where the old one was, more or less. Where the old pot is, which is there. Which should be fine. So I think that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna mount it. Right there. Okay. So we'll just flip it over. There's some M tape on there. Already supplied for you. Take that off. Give it a little rub in my finger, make sure there's no dust on there. And no grease. So it sticks. And then we'll just plow it down in place, like that. And that should stay there. 
Once it's all back together, it'll all be fine. So, we shall tighten this bit up. As my dogs go absolutely nuts. Because they're a bunch of noisy suds. There we go. It doesn't need to be massively tight. Just give a little nip. And we are good to go. So. There's a lot of grease in this one. So I'm going to clean it out. Because obviously it's going to be covering the e-brake. Or the new true brake, should I say. As you can see, there's a lot of grease in there. I went a bit crazy with the grease. Mainly because I didn't think I'd have to be taking it apart again. But I couldn't resist this part. So it was a must. So let's just keep cleaning around. So we've got no residue. Whatsoever. Okie dokie. And that, my ladies and friends, is the piston nice and clean. Or the shield for it, should I say. Or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you want to call this bit. So brass part back in, as you should be. Then we need to decide how much travel we'd like. So we're going to go for minimum travel, which is this bad boy. And it just literally sits on the top like that. Yep, sits on the top. And then the spring goes on, of which I don't think there's a particular side. And then the brake goes on. And that, there's not a lot going on there. So this is going to be very stiff indeed. And then this is going to be the hardest part, lining it up. But to be fair, that seems to have just clonked straight in. No danger whatsoever. So let's... Uh, See if we can get a catch on it, which we can, more or less, straight away. There we go. Tighten it up too much till you've got the other side in. Get the other one. And just have a little look because you'll have to have a little play. There it is. And that's gone in straight away. Okay. As you can see it's not a massively complicated job at all. Some bits are fiddly, like rearranging the wires um, and stuff like that. So as you can see that's it's even making the table wobble. But that there's not much travel in that whatsoever. And that's basically it, it's on, it's in, it's on. All we've got to do now is stick the top back on, make sure all the wires are clear, 
so nothing's going to get pinched because that's the biggest issue with this whole build is pinching and it's something that we don't want so sorry about the uh, wires everywhere it's uh, like I said limited space okay so I'm going to move the microphone out the way so I can get on with this and I'll just you'll see me I'll fast forward it a little bit Okay, so it's all in place, so we shall sort our little pedals out, put them back on. As you will see here, there is next to no travel. Well, that's it. That's it for a good solid. So that already feels a lot better. So let's fit them onto the rig and test them out. So here is the amount of actual travel to full on brake. Now there's a lot of flex in the actual pedal board holder um, so obviously if you can like if I, if I stick a rod or a stick underneath the end so there's no more flex you can see that it hardly moves at all and you can see we're just slowly putting the brake on how much pressure is needed to apply in order to get full brake as you can see there's not much movement at all there's obviously quite a bit of movement in the actual pedal board but again that's easily solved if it was on the floor you'd even you'd have even less movement basically so I've got a little bit more movement due to the pedal board moving but we're basically needing 20 kilos of force to get it to do maximum pedal so that's quite impressive to be honest so this was like the first lap with the pedal so I normally get lowish 36s 136 normally so that's basically the what we're aiming to get but more um, what we're looking for more so is, is the consistency so I wasn't very consistent with the other pedal because getting the brake balance right 
every time is near on impossible. So the tides would fluctuate badly. Anything from um, 500 to maybe 700 at a time. In terms of tents. But on the first go, it was quite impressive. So I was obviously stamping on the gas, uh, stamping on the pedal, sorry, on the brake pedal, just to gauge how much pressure I needed to put on it in order to get full brake. And then it was just a bit of a playing around within the 10 laps to see how I can like trail brake with it, how much pressure I need for that. Um, so it was a bit of a learning curve. Obviously it's only 10 laps and it's my first 10 laps with the brake. So I'm not gonna be setting blisteringly quicker laps than I was before. <clears throat> but as you will get to see in a moment, I'll give you my first lap and then I'll give you my last lap, but you'll get to see all of the laps I did in between on the right hand side as we go over the line. So I got up a 36.7, which wasn't bad at all for a first go. And as you can see on the times on the side, they did start to tumble. 0.4s, 0.1s, nearly got a 35. Made a mistake in this chicane of death, I think, on the 37. Then another low 36. Made another mistake on lap 8. A 0.1 on 9. And by the 10th lap, I was sort of, sort of getting the hang of it. Um, and it, it was becoming very intuitive and it was easier to modulate this early on so I was uh, to be all to be honest I was uh, I was quite impressed with how the pedal feel felt okay so as you can see this brake mod is absolutely bloody awesome can't recommend it enough the pedal feel is solid it feels just like a load cell, solid as hell, but just remember it isn't a load cell. It works just like the normal G29 pedal in terms of its mechanism. It's just way more refined and uh, the pedal feel is, is, is unreal. Um, as you can see from the times, I went the quickest I've ever gone with that setup on that track on the last lap in only 10 laps so that speaks for itself as you could see from the video there's not much pedal travel whatsoever there's more that, that was actually more travel in my plate than there was on the pedal itself and um, which i'll remedy at some point um but other than that it's definitely it's definitely a, a winner definitely a winner it's far better than the spring that you can get as the mods it's far better than the 3d printed inserts that you can get for the brake mod it's way cheaper than a load cell what's a load cell 150 quid this is like 50 60 quid and it's made from high grade materials it's cnc milled aluminium that alone is just you know it's worth the money they've obviously put the uh, the time and effort into designing it properly and it works right out the box it does exactly what they're saying it does um this is the blurb that i'm going to show you that's um off their website um so obviously the actual um brake mod itself is called true brake and it is done by a company called axc sims um which are mostly known for doing drones i think and um, this is their first um dabble into the world of racing sims so not bad for the first attempt i've got to say um so yeah i'm i'm on board with this i think i think if they can produce some i don't know what else what other mods you could do to the g29 or other wheels for that matter um other than the brake feel and maybe they might be able to do something with the throttle pedal god knows um to give that a bit of a heavier feel but not much point in that to be fair because if you get this this particular brake mod then you now have two extra springs you could stick in your throttle if you're a g uh, if you're a gran turismo 
player that is and you don't need your clutch you can use your clutch spring which is heavier than your accelerator pedal or now you can use your brake spring which is far more heavier than your um, accelerator pedal so you'd have two little options there you could uh, swip over and just have a little go see if they uh, make any difference um, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm going to say yes recommend it all the way I'm going to leave a link in the description to their website uh, you can look on eBay as well they're actually on eBay if you just type in true break into eBay it'll come up and uh, you'll be able to read all about it and read what it's on about um, I can't, yeah, I've not much else to say about this really you've seen what it looks like how it works and how well it works out the box um, you'll you're you're definitely going to build your um, you're definitely going to build your left leg up. That's for sure because it takes a bit of pressing. But you know that's no bad thing. But in terms of how you're going to be able to modulate the brake, you're going to be able to do it a lot better. I mean, I've only done ten laps in it, and I was sort of getting the hang of it near the end. And as you could see from the times, it was pretty consistent from the get go. Um, other than my own mistakes which is what the time differences were I'd made some mistakes on the laps uh, but on a whole they were really close and that's exactly what you want you want to be able to do consistent laps all the time because consistency most of the time wins you the race you don't necessarily have to be the fastest um, so yeah that concludes this video I think I thought hopefully you enjoyed this uh, you know this this video not my normal type of video this is more what I do on my other channel, on my Sonar Creep channel. Um, I'll leave a link for that in the description as well if you fancy going and have a look. It was a, um, a channel I set up to modify my own car. Um, and you can have a, you can have a butcher's and that and keep yourself entertained by me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end the video there. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. Hit the like button if you liked the video. And uh, leave a comment in the comment section asking any questions if you want or just a comment on, you know, what you thought of the vid and if it was um, helpful enough for you to think about going and buying it. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video, which will be a GT Sport video with my new brake mod. Bye for now.